561001. The ministry explained Chicago, Illinois, USA. Shall we pray? <clears throat> oh, Heavenly Father, we thank thee tonight for the privilege that we have of coming to thee in the name of the Lord Jesus, as he has bid us to do so. And he said, Ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. We believe that, Lord, with all of our heart, and we pray that you will forgive us for all of our mistakes, our shortcomings, and will sanctify this little gathering tonight to the honor and glory of the name. We ask it in the name of thy child, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Be seated. Just coming in the door, just now meeting many good friends of mine that I have met before, and some of them have just returned from overseas. Brother Duplessis and his brother Rasmussen, another Boston friend, and Claire Hutchkins, many of the others that was greeting me at the door in their way coming in. It just makes me feel real good to see them all back again. I just wonder what it will be by Joseph when he cross over the line and see them all in glory. And when we are at that great wedding supper set, we are the redeemed of all ages, will gather there and will reach across the table and shake the other hand. Wouldn't that be a wonderful time? We're looking for with a great anticipation for that time. Now, yesterday I had two sermons preached to you yesterday, and you were very patient with them. So I'm thankful to you that you had grace enough to come back on a Monday night. So I thought tonight it would be good that if we give all of our time tonight to gifts and the working of the miracles and divine healing, just a little talk before we have our prayer line. And then Brother Joseph called me up today and he told me he wanted me to preach for you or teach rather tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. And if the Lord doesn't change my mind, I want to teach on the signs of the time we are living. If the Lord willing, tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock is that in this auditorium or the church auditorium tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock at the Philadelphian church and tomorrow night I thought it good you know you just have uh, been so hard for me to teach the American people from understanding that you don't have to lay hands on people they just been taught that all their life so they just believe that and after I leave Thursday night Mr. Osborne coming in till Osborne, a marvelous brother, was a powerful minister and perhaps others who will be there here and that I see in advertising the paper and I'm trying to think of that little fellow's name now, Hicks, Tommy Hicks and Ogrovin is to be in the meeting. Brother Joseph Bose says, Brother Hicks and Brother Ogrovin, thank you, Brother Joseph. Brother, I could remember Brother Hicks coming but Ogrovin and so they're to be here and they are men who pray and lay hands on the sick. But you know, being its home here in the home church and my home school and the link tech here in Chicago, I think tomorrow night, God willing, we'll just have a little line of laying on hands and praying for the sick. I've heard so many of them say, Brother Branham, if you'd just touch me, I'd get well. Well, you know that is what faith is, is what you believe. And Jaira said, You come lay your hands on my daughter and she will be well. And the woman said, you don't have to come under my roof, just speak the word and my servant will live. So it's according to your faith. So I haven't had one for a long time. And being to preach twice tomorrow, I thought tonight, I just take it a little easy and preach twice tomorrow and have one of those lines for Tuesday night, then continue on as usual on Wednesday. I hope that pleases the Holy Spirit and pleases the people. It's my desire always is to please God first. Then try to make burdens just as light for my fellow man as I possibly can. Since the Lord has given me his love and grace in my heart and told me that he saved me, and I have had such a feeling for his people, and especially the sick ones, it seems to be the Lord has blessed it marvelously praying for the people. And some of the most outstanding things that I've ever read of, I have seen our Lord do it. Now, friends, they said about a fourth of the congregation tonight is strangers. Maybe our first time meeting, and I don't claim that I'm a healer. I know I'm not. I claim that Jesus is a healer, that he has already purchased your healing, and by his stripes you were healed already. See, by his death you were saved. If you're a sinner, you're already saved in the sight of God, and you will not be condemned as long as the blood of the Lord Jesus is atoning for you. That's the reason that God doesn't slay you right now. But if you die without mercy, without accepting his mercy, then you stand as a sinner in front of God. You're already condemned. But now, if you, God, 
the sin question was settled. When Jesus died at Calvary, he taken away the sin of the world. Now, and if you receive the benefits of that by accepting it as your own personal, as he, as your own personal savior now, and if you accept it, then you're free because Christ has made you free. But if you reject it, you have judged yourself and you have judged him not worthy to and not able to save you. And the same thing by healing. He was wounded for transgressions with his stripes we were healed. Now God has set in the church gifts. And those gifts God set in the church. And I know it's probably Presbyterian, Lutheran, myself a Baptist. And so then you wonder, then why we all gather together and our fellowship like this? Now, I don't miserably despise Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, or whoever that doesn't agree with me on scripture. I just think maybe that God hasn't revealed it to you. Or maybe you just don't understand it. But friend, to tell me that it doesn't happen, you'd be just a little too late. I don't see it happen, see? I just know it's true, and I know that he is and I reward of those who diligently seek him. And I believe that God hasn't lost any of his power. I believe that is the same yesterday, today, and forever in every way. Now, I can show you in the Bible where God gave his church the authority by using his name by faith to cast out evil spirits, to heal the sick, and to do great signs and wonders. I can show you what was given to the church, but there is no reward in Bible nowhere where he ever took that power away from the church or said he would take it away from the church. But this gospel of this same deliverance was to be preached to all nations beginning at Jerusalem and we was to be witnesses of him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth that this gospel and these signs was to follow the believer until he comes again. Go ye into all the world, Mark 16, just only one third of it knows about Jesus. Now, after 1900 years, into all the world and preach the gospel now. The gospel, not the word only, but making the word manifest. Paul said so. The gospel came not in word only, but through the power and manifestation of the Holy Spirit is the gospel must be preached to every nation. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, we just can't cut that out. We've got to face it. That's right. We've got to face it. And now many times today, I know Christian friends that... There's been many mockeries made out of those things. We can expect that. If there wasn't any mockery, why? There wouldn't be any. But we have, as long as you see there's a bogus dollar, remember that dollar was made off of a real dollar. When you see somebody impersonating a Christian, just remember there's a real Christian that he's patterned off of somewhere. Down in India, you get, when you go down to the, there in Bombay and different places, you just find religious clowns, I call them. They lay out on spikes, they walk through the fire, they cut themselves into all kinds of enchantments and so forth to get some money. They're only clowning. Way back in the interior there, there's a tr man's true heart, honest at heart, that's cutting himself, walking through fire, trying to appease the gods that he serves in. But this out on the side is a hypocrite to that, to that he, the worshiper, but he's only trying to make money out of it. And we have men today that go through the land, and now not only evangelists pray for the sick, but all around. And we have people in our churches who impersonate each other. Try to say, now, because she did it, I will too. Because he did it, I will too. That's hypocrisy. You are what you are by the grace of God. And just be yourself. God will love you better, and the people will love you better too. If you just be yourself, be honest and sincere in what you do, and God will bless your efforts. And now, here a few days ago, a man was reading a book where a man wrote a terrible article about me. I believe I mentioned it yesterday or sometime, and about how that he knowed a man that had prayed for or had called out into the audience, and he was healed of a trouble for two years. It came back on him, and he said that he showed that divine healing is wrong. He said, or the man would have stayed healed. Well, the doctor will be different with him there, even so. But I think that a person's trying to introduce a nation into a world that's almost atheotic now. A man that will breathe the name of the Lord Jesus and claim to be a servant. I believe if a man 
would represent me and I, Moses Sinan, would represent me to the public like some people represent the Lord Jesus, I'd be willing to have him arrested and put in jail. That's right. Why? They try to say that he's a weakling. Why? He was a God who lived many years ago, but he doesn't live today. It is just some little book or something that we keep a few creeds of his life for. No, sir. I do not believe that. I believe that he's just as alive and real today as he was when he opened the Red Sea and the children of Israel marched through, just as real today as he was um, as we went into the fiery furnace with the Hebrew children to the lion's den with Daniel or stood on the banks of Galilee and restored the leper to his normal condition or touched the woman, touched him with a blood issue. I believe he's just the same Lord Jesus today, just as real and just as alive as he ever was. I think there's no fault with him. The fault's in us. I think there's where the fault is. Now let's get the fault out. Now it's like I said, if a doctor, a good doctor, though he'd have to cut you if you got a cancer, let's cut the thing out, get rid of it. If you got a tumor, let's operate and get the thing out. If it's a bad appendix going to burst, take it out. If it does hurt, let's get rid of it. And if old unbelief and selfishness and denominations are absolutely blinding us and separating us and separating brotherhood and the fellowship of Christ, let's get rid of the thing and get right with God and get out into the harnessing and serve the Lord. When the book is taught over there that God has placed in the church five ministering spirits, first is apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. Those gifts God places in the church sovereignly. Now, those gifts God places in the church. Then when you become in the body of Christ, then there's nine spiritual gifts that goes in every local church body. And those gifts are gifts that you pray uh, for, to pray for the gift of speaking in tongues or the gift of interpretation of tongues. All these are the gifts that goes into the church. Pray for the gifts of healing and pray for the gifts of miracles and so forth. That's the ones that you pray for. And the Spirit comes on and works in each local assembly too in the perfecting of the church. Now many times we have misjudged that, went over the mark and so forth. And that's what caused it. But we expected, I, if it wasn't that way, I'd think there was something wrong with the program. Because it's Satan trying to upset it, you see. So look, we believe that. And I believe to you Methodists and Presbyterians here tonight, I've seen many things since I've been in the Pentecostal realms that I don't agree with. That's right. I've seen plenty of it, but what of it? I think one of the most gallant men that I spoke to in a long time was Louis Petrius of Stockholm, Sweden. One day we were riding out in a car and he said, Branham, Billy Graham sat and rode in there. It was when Billy had first started in evangelistic service and we were talking and he said, how long have you been Pentecostal? I said, ever since I received the Holy Ghost. And he said, wasn't you the Baptist first? I said, yes, sir. He said, so was I. And he said, I see them tearing up the furniture and taking over the chair. They said, but I know they had something. And I went with them so I could bring them back. Oh, I love that. I said, by the Petrius, just a moment. Let me write that down. I want to keep that remark. I went with him so I could bring them back. Now, when I come into the Pentecostal, the Pentecostal people, I found one was a oneness, and one was a twoness, and one was a threeness, and one's baptized this way and that way, and one was this and one was that. They were broke up in an assembly, and one united, and one this. And you know what I did? I didn't join with any of them. I stayed free from my dominations and stayed between them so I could love them all at the same time and bring them together. That's right, see? Because they are all brethren and they are all good men, good women, they are brothers and sisters in Christ. So therefore, I've never drawn a line no matter what the man was, what he believed, that didn't make it who he believes is what I'm thinking about is the Lord Jesus. Now, if it's true that Jesus Christ, the Bible said in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, the Bible says he is. Then if he is, then you can only interpret it one way, and that you might try to play something different. But the Bible said Jesus Christ the same. 
just partially the same he's the same see yesterday today and forever and it has to be the same in principle the same in power the same in attitude everything just like it was the bible's wrong is that right the bible's wrong well then we'll find out if he is the same today now this is we'll talk for i read my scripture in a few moments then we're going to go right into praying for the sick and just make this a great night of praying for the sick and then tomorrow afternoon the preaching now, i want to ask the newcomer something if he is the same yesterday today and forever well what was he yesterday that's what i want to know what was he yesterday and if we can find out what he was yesterday then he will have to be the same thing today or well, the scriptures are wrong is that right <laughs> the scripture is wrong now Methodist and Presbyterian and all of you let's just lay it down and look at it and see if it's right if he was yesterday something and he isn't the same today then the scripture is wrong and truly he died and the Mohammedans is right and the rest of them is dead and buried and his disciples stole him away and that settled it he's gone forever now that if if he isn't the same if this book if one word in it is wrong to me it's all wrong it's either every bit right or it's all wrong if one scripture is not inspired then to me there's none of them inspired a person is a good man or is not a good man true and that's the way god is he's still god or he's not god and this is his word and his duty bound to his word or either this is not his word and we are all wrong in the bible but i'm so happy tonight to know this as a poor illiterate man but yet i'm so thankful to know this that beyond one shadow of doubt i know that this is his word and he's just the same and he's alive tonight and all other gods are failures and there's no other god outside of almighty god and the lord jesus christ which is his son was god made manifest in flesh they and it is true and by god's grace through his divine gift we can prove that beyond one shadow of a doubt and then what kind of a people should we be when we see that proved to us when jesus promised when he was here on earth now we'll watch him as he goes in his ministry just for a few moments this is for the newcomers as he moved in his ministry we find out he wasn't born a king or he was a king when he was born not an earthly king he was a heavenly king and he wasn't received when he was born by the earth no true messenger listen now no true real true messenger to this day or no day at any time has ever been received by the world no messenger of god has ever been received by the world and may i say this a little stout now never did the ecclesiastical system of this world ever receive god's messenger think of that through all ages when men mix their ecclesiastical systems and god sends his messengers they have condemned him jesus said which one of your prophets has your fathers not stoned which one of them see sure they are always condemned when they have the message of god because it is contrary to man's thought of god man tries to make his own theory see and he can't do it and we have to have people who will go after such cause as my father used to say it takes all kinds of people to make up the world and we've got them now when he was here on earth let's follow him just in one book and that book of saint john let's follow him just for a few moments and see what he was yesterday and then we can kind of settle our minds what he is today then if is that true enough if we can follow him now to save time you mark it in your bible saint john the first chapter let's go to it now just i'll take a few instant mentally you of course each one of the writers wrote the same thing and maybe if they never wrote it they had wrote the same instant but maybe if you stood here and seen something and someone stood over here it might be just a little different but it is the same instance now in saint john 1 when jesus was born and then we know the story and when he ended his ministry after his temptation immediately when he entered his ministry he entered it preaching the gospel to the poor because the rich had refused him and another thing 
he began healing the sick. Did you notice that? Well then, if God's program, as some people put it, God wants man to suffer for his glory. Then Jesus came down to do the will of the Father. Then he said he did it. Did he? And why did he heal those sick and afflicted then? If he come to do the will of God, who makes them sick? The will of God says man today that God makes people sick so that he can show his glory in their patience. And then Jesus comes down and takes all the sickness off of them. Then he defeated the purpose that the Father sent him for. He ought to come down and made everybody sick, see? That wouldn't have been the purpose of the Father then. But you see how different men make it from what God has it, huh? How? Now, does that sound reasonable? Is that Bible? Now, this is a small group tonight. We're talking heart to heart. When Jesus met his disciples, all begin to follow him, and we find there was a man by the name of Peter got saved. And the strange thing, when he came to Jesus, Jesus knew who that man was. Now, that was a strange thing, wasn't it? When he came, he said, Why, you are Simon, the son of Bajona, said, But from here after, you'll be called Peter. You are Simon, your father was Jonas, so I'm going to call you Peter which Peter means little stone, and said, I'm going to call you a little stone from this on. That was a strange thing for a man who had never seen him, yet knowed his name, and knowed who his daddy was, and all about him. That was kind of a, but that was Jesus yesterday. If that's Jesus yesterday, that's got to be Jesus today, if his sin is that right. Then we find out that they, another fellow, got converted by the name of Philip. And he had a good friend out of the Orthodox Church. So he went around a mountain a few miles, and he found his friend under a tree praying. So he said, come see who we found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And this fellow, very staunch, and had been taught in the Orthodox Jewish religion, he raised up and said, now look here, Philip. Could there be any good thing come out of the city like Nazareth? And I think Philip gave him the best answer that anybody can come and see. We hear people criticize this and criticize that. Go find out for yourself. That's the way I'm going to speak on that in a few moments. Come, find out for yourself. So he said, right, I'll go with you. And around the hill they come and they walked up just praying for the sick. And the Jews all standing there condemning him, finding fault with him. And you know, if you go to a meeting to find fault with it, the devil will sure anoint you. You can sure find fault. If you go to get the good out of it, God will anoint you. You'll get the good out of it. So there, they was all standing there, anointed with the devil. The Bible said there was. Jesus said there was. They were anointed with the devil and the believers were anointed with god and so philip come up and brought up nathaniel coming with him like somebody bring him to the meeting and when jesus looked over and seen him he said behold an israelite in whom there's no girl now if i'd say that and break it down it would be there is a real christian believer a real truthful man something of that order why the man said now wait a minute I've never seen that man, never heard of him, just yesterday since Philip told me. And here, we arrived here on the grounds, and that man, as soon as I walked up, in this line tells me that I am a believer. How does he know that I am a believer, and how does he know I'm honest? He said, Rabbi, whence knowest thou me? When did you know me? Jesus looked at him a moment, and he said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree praying, when Philip came up, I saw you. Why? He said, Rabbi, the Son of God, is the King of Israel. That was the true Orthodox believer. Jesus said, Because I told you this, that I saw you under the tree over yonder, and know you as a good man, and never seen you in my life, because I told you that. Do you believe me? Yes, Lord. He, he said, You'll see greater things than this then. Come follow me now. And what did the Jews say? The Jews said, do you know what that guy is? He's a Beelzebub. Now, he's a fortune teller. He's got mental telepathy. And the devil inspires him to do that. See, they can't find a loophole. So they just made up their own word. And see, he's inspired of the devil. 
the devil does that he's birds of them. Jesus turned around to them. Now what? That was just yesterday. Is that right? Well, if he's the same, he will have to do the, the same today. Or he's not the same. Is that true? He has to be the same today. And then those leaders, they, Jesus turned to those leaders. Now listen. Watch Jesus now what he said. Listen close. He said, Whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall not be forgiven him. But when the Holy Ghost is come, and you speak a word against that, now in other words, the only way that would keep, Jesus was speaking of today then, sin, because Jesus was in a corporal body then. The corporal body has been lifted for sin offering at the throne of God, and the Holy Spirit, which is Christ, the Spirit of Christ is here today. He said now, you, while I'm here on earth, you speak against me, this, and call me Beelzebub, because the scripture went on, said, because he said that he had an unclean spirit, calling the spirit of God in a man an unclean spirit, a devil, he said, you speak against it, now to me, I'll forgive you. But when the Holy Ghost is come, and you speak against it, you know, I've forgiven you. In this world, in the world to come. What a stern warning for this day, then, in his resurrection power. When he's here, and that's what he said, that's his remarks. Now let's go, just as for father. A few days later, he's going down to Jericho. And on his, he goes right straight from Jerusalem to Jericho. If you ever visit Palestine, but he goes up around Samaria, he had need to go to Samaria. Wonder why? Now we'll find out in a few minutes why he went up there. The father had told him to go up there. That's all the way up around the mountain this way. Instead of going down, but he went up to Jericho. Not from, not to Jericho, but to Samaria, pardon me. And he sat down by a wall and sent his disciples away. When he sent them away, out came a woman of Samaria and said, Jesus looked at her. He was a young man of about 30 years old, 32, and he said, Woman, bring me a drink. And she said, It's not customary for you Jews to ask with Samaritan such. We have no dealings with one another. And you're a young man. Now, the woman was of ill fame, said, You're a young man. Ask me such a question. Jesus said, But if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for a drink. Why, she said, where? What are you going to draw it with? You haven't got no bucket, no rope, the well's deep. How could you give me any water? He said, but the water that I give is waters of life, springing up into the soul. Why, she said, now. She seen he was religious then. He said, well, now look. He said, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you see in Jerusalem, and you're greater than this well that our father dug, and they, and so forth. And Jesus went on with the conversation. Now, here's the interpretation. He was contacting her spirit. The father sent him up there, but there was a woman. Now, just a minute, and I'll prove that by the scripture. And he found what her trouble was. He said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. He said, that's right, you got five. She turned and looked at him. Who is this young fellow in the middle age here? This you sitting here, she said. Right by, she said, sir, I perceive or I understand by this what you have told me, that you are a prophet. Now, she never said he's Beelzebub. She said he was a prophet. She said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now listen, what the Samaritan thought. Now, you see what uh, the Jews thought. When the Jew come and see him do his sign, it's, he said, Rabbi, thou art the son of God, the king of Israel. Now, that's what some Samaritans are going to say. The Samaritans said, I perceive that you are a prophet. And we know that when the Messiah cometh, he will tell us all these things. But she couldn't understand who he was, said, you must be a prophet. But we know that we're looking for the coming of the Messiah, and when the Messiah comes, he's going to do this sign. Jesus said, I am he that speaks to you. Oh my, if that was a sign of Messiah yesterday, it's a messianic sign. Today, if he is the same, 
yesterday today and forever isn't right a woman a few days after that he was passing through a crowd going to heal a little sick girl and the woman touched his garment she said in herself if i can touch him i'll be made well he's a holy man and i believe him to be just what he says he is she touched his garment and she ran back and hid herself in the crowd jesus said who touched me who touched me and everybody she and all of them and nobody no i never touched you and peter always you know with his boldness he stood out and said lord how could anybody tell everybody's touching you and why saith thou who toucheth me why stop the procession as you're going on standing here saying who touched me who touched me when everybody's just a loving around you and everything he said yes but i got with somebody touched me with faith that's the way today we are lolling around the church and calling ourselves christians but i wonder where the faith is is that brings the virtue see calling ourselves reverend and doctor and bishop and my i just wonder where the faith touches that holy father and so forth oh my we love great names and titles don't we <laughs> just said your brethren but anyhow we don't we sing our anthems like we were the angelic choir and an overtrained voice with there that hold a note till you're blue in the face that's not singing i like this real good sing like i had sung on the platform tonight a brother from sweden and them singing down from his glory is my favorite song and to see people who touched me everybody denied but jesus looked around over the crowd until he found where that was flowing from that strength was coming he found a little woman and he told her your faith has made you whole and she came and fell at his feet and worshiped him now if that was jesus yesterday he's got to be jesus today is that right if he's the same yesterday today going down in saint john 5 now going down to the pool of Bethsaida, he come to a great multitude of people thousands laying there lame halt blind withered <laughs> waiting for the moving of the water and jesus a few days after that woman touched him went right down through that bunch of people and people see he was full of compassion he was but godly compassion not human sympathy but godly compassion what a difference certainly is like the two kinds of love one's affectionate and the other is divine and so he passed down to that pool like this would be in this hole here this pit and there laid thousands of people laying there lame halt blind and withered many historians have told us the great pathetic sight who stabbed one another trying to get in where the angel come on the water and jesus passed through that and went where afflicted and blind and every and found a man laying on a little pallet laying there that had absolutely processed trouble or something he had it for 38 years it was retarded he had that trouble when i was a baby see so you can just think of that difference in the age now here he is laying on a pallet and jesus walked up to him leaving the blind the afflicted and twisted and halt and maim and said wilt thou be made whole isn't that strange emmanuel what was that jesus yesterday that was according to the word and i'm dearest to doubt one word of it but the bible said he walked by them lame halt blind and withered scripture said so and he found this man that wasn't too bad he could walk he couldn't race very good because sometime someone beats me to the pool so he said now he could walk he could get around he wasn't blind lame halt but he had some kind of retarded disease had it for 38 years and jesus said take up your bed and go into your house jesus walked away and left that crowd what that's what the scripture said that's right the man was found packing his bed because it was the sabbath and jesus was questioned and jesus gave him the answer in my closing the jews did you think he to be questioned today 
do you think today if Chicago would say, Mr. Branham, we understand you, pray for the sick. So we are going to empty every hospital and put them out here in Soldier's Field or whatever the place is out here from these big stadium places. And we're going to lay all the hospital cases all around here everywhere. Every doctor's going to be there and everything. And we sure invite you to Chicago. Come on up. Thank you. The Lord willing, I'll be there. And I went walking down through there. Mr. Branham, could you heal one? Nope. It isn't me that doeth the works, it's the Father. Is that what Jesus said? He walked down through the crowd, walked away and said, Well, the Father never showed me anything. Walk away. What do you think the doctors would say? What do you think the mayor would say? What do you think the preachers would say? They'd be the first one to kick. I told you there wasn't nothing to it. But Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. Does the Bible say that? He's the same. Now the Jews question Jesus. Now listen, here's his word, St. John 5, 19. Very, very, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing. That way the Son likewise. That was Jesus yesterday. That was Jesus today. What promise did he give? The works that I do shall you also. Is that right? I'll be little while in the world, won't see me no more. <coughs> That's the unbeliever. They wouldn't believe him, no matter what happened. They didn't believe him then. They didn't believe that God was in Christ. They certainly didn't believe it. People don't believe it today. They say he was just a prophet, a good man. He was God. Certainly he was God. They didn't believe God was in Christ. And now he said, as the Father has sent me to do his will, listen close, so send I you. And the things that I do shall you also. More than this shall you do, cause to be, he could spread more. He was in one person. God was there. God's in thousands now. More than this shall you do, for I go to my father, sin. Now watch this. That was Jesus yesterday. That's Jesus today. Now the true servant of God never takes credit for anything. He gives credit to God. And the truth of God's word that at Calvary, the emancipation of the proclamation was signed by the blood of the Lord Jesus and everything that Satan ever did to you, he was stripped of every power he had at Calvary. And we tonight as his servants stand to serve the public in the name of the Lord Jesus, claiming to the people that the work has been finished and we will be granted to whosoever will according to your faith. Now, do you understand it? That's Jesus the same. Now, he put it in the word, writing that he sent prophets, he sent gifts, he placed it all in the church for the perfecting of the church. Now, it's practically time right now to start. And I'm going to make one little quotation from the scripture here for just about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to start and put all the rest of the time in prayer for the sick. It's found in St. Matthew, the 7th chapter, in the 42nd of us. And I want you to listen real closely now that for the newcomers this is for all now listen what jesus said he's speaking to his disciples and to the pharisees and sadducees and so forth the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of solomon and behold a greater than solomon is here may god add his blessings to the world david one day sitting in the presence of nathan the prophet and he said, Is it nice for me to live in a house of cedar and the ark of my God be an attend? And Nathaniel or Nathan, being a real prophet of God, but you know, the prophets are just men as anointed time after time by the Spirit. They are eagles who go up and foresee things. They can't go up on their own power. An eagle can't go up on his own power. The wind has to pick him up, and it takes the Holy Spirit wind to pick the prophet up it take him away in order to see things see things back this way or things back that way but he takes this by his own power he has wings and he is now the pigeon could never lift that far neither could the robin or no other bird could lift like the eagle because he's just his part he's made up to lift up He's a heavenly bird that soars above all other birds. He's an eagle. 
and now when he's down he's just a bird but when he is he was sitting with david he said david do all that's in your heart for god is with you i love that and that night the lord appeared to his prophet and said go tell my servant david he was a little fellow and i took you from the ship boat from feeding your father's flock to give you a great name among men and i've been with you and i've caused those who's constrained you and so forth but i can't let you build this temple but every since through the judges i've never spoke to one but i've went from tent to tent and from tabernacle to tabernacle chronicles i believe about the seventh chapter the twelfth chapter of first chronicles and said i've went from tent to tent and have not dwelt in a house but your son I'll raise up, and he will build me a house, and I'll establish his throne forever and forever. Now all Israel look for the time of the coming, the son of David, that was promised in the lineage of David. And they know that would be the Messiah. If we had time now to base this down and give the point, but I'll just hurry. So when Solomon, which was successor of David, when he came, God anointed Solomon and gave him a gift. God always has give gifts to lead his people. Such as scriptures, gifted human beings has led God's people. And so he, Solomon, prayed for a gift of wisdom. And God gave him the gift of wisdom to lead the people. And Solomon's age was called the Golden Age of Israel. It was a type or a foreshadow of the coming of the Lord Jesus in the great millennium when the whole world will live in a golden age. And Solomon foreshadowed Jesus and when with one gift. And when Jesus came, he had all the gifts. God gave him the spirit without measure. And he came and when he was greater, he just said the prophet preached and he never because there was a miracle done. And a gifted, spirited prophet went in in the belly of a whale, where all the Nineveh people got on the coast, so they fished, and all the fishermen out there, wicked as they were, the whale ran in and opened up his mouth, and the prophet stepped out. It was a sign, and with the anointing he preached to people who didn't know which was right and left hand until the city, the south of St. Louis, Missouri, repented and put sackcloth and on the animals and repented at the preaching of Jonas. Jesus said so. He said, they will rise up in the day of the judgment and condemn the generation. They had one sign. Anointed prophet preached one message and the whole city repented. And he said, yet I say to you, there is one greater than Jonas here and they wouldn't repent. The world gets darker and darker. Farther away all the time, knowledge increases and wisdom and so forth widely speaking and the kingdom of god suffers on down notice he said and the queen of the south which was the queen of sheba shall raise in this generation and condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of solomon and yet i say unto you that are greater than solomon is here notice he was condemning them because they hadn't recognized the anointed spirit that was on him of god they tried to class him as a madman they tried to class him as a devil possessed man <laughs> doing miracles by the devil he said those people and you great ecclesiastics in other words who sits over here with your fancy buttons and your robe to be called doctor and rabbi and the people in Nineveh who didn't even know which was right and left hand repented when they saw the sign of the rented prophet Jonas come out of the belly of a whale after being there three days and give a message, our ignorant, illiterate people will raise up in the day of the judgment and condemn you. Ecclesiastics, you see it? And he said, The queen of Sheba, a heathen country, pagan, come and had the wisdom of Solomon. Yet, being a pagan, and she will rise in the judgment and condemn you, bunch of preachers, because she come from the uttermost parts of the civilization to hear the wisdom of Solomon. See, he was upbraiding them because many signs had been done of the messianic sign and they still refused to hear it had hated oh they were intercommitted oh my 
They had BA and BD and all kinds of degrees, but they failed to see that he was a Messiah, and they failed to recognize it, though the scripture said that those things would be. And may I stop here a minute and say, my manager said a few weeks ago, if God doesn't send the judgment upon the United States soon to be addressed God, he will have to resurrect Solomon Gomorrah and apologize to them. That's right. It's become one great big vulgar house of prostitution and the worst in the world. Divorce rates are higher here than anywhere else in the world and naked, helpless women on the streets and drinking and carousing and every one of them, church members nearly. Oh, you pastor that will stand and let your congregation get by with such as that, more damnation will be heaped upon you and God will require their blood at your hands. Then make fun of divine healing and the power of and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, proving that he is alive. You hear? Now look, what a price that Queen of Sheba had to pay. You know how long it taken her to travel? Three months. When Solomon's gift was recognized among the people, that he was a gifted man, that God was with Solomon. Everybody came from everywhere to see Solomon because he had a divine gift that was in operation, and it proved itself. The Bible said God will testify of his gifts. He always has. He always will. Now, might be a lot of things said that wasn't right, but God will testify of his gifts. You don't believe the Holy Spirit is a gift? Let it come on you one time. God will testify of his gifts. Now, everybody would come into this country, several hundred miles from Palestine across the desert, everyone would come by. The Queen of Sheba kept hearing, Oh, the great God of the Israelites has anointed a man and give him a gift. His name is Solomon. He's a king up there. Everyone must pass by. And all at once, Jesus said this when he was here on earth, No man can come to me except my father draws him. He said, you got eyes and you can't see. you got ears and you can't hear to fulfill the scriptures. God had did that. Now he said, no man can come to me except my father draws him first. But somehow, down in the heart of that queen of Sheba, there's a desire to see this great gift of God. She wouldn't. She'd take the other man's words, but she wanted to see it for herself. That's just exactly what Philip to Nathaniel said. Come and see for yourself. One will criticize it. Don't take what somebody else says. Come see for yourself. The scripture says, taste and see, the Lord is good. Try it once. A boy one time eating an apple, an infidel was debating that there was no God. The boy peeled the apple, watered it, and put it in his mouth and started eating. He said, what do you want? He said, I want to ask you a question. And he said, what is it? He said, is this apple sweet or sour? He said, I don't know. I have not eaten it yet. He said, that's just what I thought. And went back and sat down. How do you know? Taste and see. Give God a chance. See if he will take it and give you glory for your misery. See if he will give you happiness for your gloom. See if he will give you health for your sickness. See if he will give you the Holy Ghost for your, your theology. Try it and see. Taste and see. The Lord is good. Let's give him a chance. And the queen said, I'll go see for myself. Now, I want you to notice what a sacrifice. When you come to see God, you don't just come on a flower bed of ease. You have to come you have to make a sacrifice. It's a sacrificial way. It's a way of death. You have to die out to come to him. You have to forget all you ever know in order to learn of him. Empty out that he can fill us. Don't mix it now. You have to empty out. So look what she did. She got a caravan of camels. Not only that, but she came with gifts. She said, if that's true, I'm going to bring gifts, and she loaded it with gold and spices and cinnamon and a costly rim, and she set out a three months journey through a hot, burning desert. Would you pull that kind of a sacrifice to see a gift of God in operation? Just wonder tonight how, if she's going to condemn us. Sam won't walk across the street, but she went three months with slow camels, a lady. And look at the perils was in the way. The deserts was full of robbers with all the treasure on. How that the robbers would have surrounded her and took 
her life. But she was willing. There was nothing going to stand in her way. She laid aside all of her theology. She came with an open heart. And she came the rough, hard way. She came to see if the gift of God really operated. And she came. And when she finally arrived, she picked she walked up to the palace. Solomon greeted her. Now, she didn't come just to stay one night. She came to stay till she was convinced. But we'll go one night and say, Oh, I heard that guy speak. I've seen this preacher. Oh, I know about Ava. Oh, his own idea. See, you don't even give him a chance. God ought to work on that hard heart and all that stuff that's been piled into you. He's got to get that out fast get you emptied out before he can ever get you she unpacked the camels and so forth and fixed the beds and got ready she was going to camp a while she was going to stay at the meetings she was going to be convinced that it was neither right or wrong if she ever seen it in operation she said i'll believe it so after she had been there for a while and she had seen the gifts of god in Solomon, she said to Solomon, she said, I have heard many things. In other words, like this, I've heard many things of you. I could hardly believe. But God did miracles with Solomon there with his gifts. Till the Bible said there was no more spirit left in her. And if you notice how that's spelled today in Second Kings, it's spelled with a little S. That's carnal spirit, not capital spirit, carnal spirit, little. No more spirit left in her. All the doubts was gone, yeah, all over. She's saying, she made a confession. She said, I have heard that the Lord God of Israel was with you, and I've come to see, and now I'm convinced above any shadow of doubt that your God is a real God. And God has anointed you to lead his people. And I even see more than what I heard about. Jesus said she'll rise up with these, with these generations and condemn it. And I say unto you, he said, a greater than Solomon is here. And I say to the audience tonight that the Queen of Sheba will rise in the judgment with the people of Chicago. And because you've listened to criticism and not tried to find out for yourself and will condemn these people, you don't have to on a streetcar or automobile, come right to the door and see the Lord Jesus moving among his people. But because some smart style, smart educated theologian told you that the days of miracles was passed and Jesus didn't put the power in his church no more, you have listened to that person and who you listen to, that's whose servant you are. I'm glad to listen to the Holy Ghost and be his servant. For Christ has raised from the dead, and he's here tonight in all of his magnificent power. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Or I'm found a false witness, and the Bible is untrue. Amen. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we do thank thee tonight for the Lord Jesus, for the resurrection, and for the Holy Spirit. And knowing that we are laying on the brink of a total annihilation in this nation tonight of ours, and you have showed signs of back and forth and across the world, and still they won't repent. You don't expect them to, Father. We're just combing out those who will, and we know that the time is at hand. Thou hast said, if they have called the master of the house Belzebub, how much more will they call they of his disciples? But let it be that. His disciples returned rejoicing, and was happy to bear the reproach of the name of the Lord Jesus. And we join with that wrong tonight, Lord, that we are happy that Jesus, the Son of God, has so blessed us. We are unworthy of his blessings, but tonight to have the sternness and boldness of the Holy Spirit to come to our knowledge in the people, even unto the thousands and tens of thousands around the world, that Jesus still lives, and his word is truth. And when he was here on earth, he said, I have come, that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. And tonight, Father, these things I speak and do, that the scripture might be fulfilled, and that Jesus said, I'll be with you to the end of the world, and the things that I do shall you also. Grant it, Lord, that many will see and believe tonight, that as many sick people thou 
has them all in their hands. Ordain and choose, Lord, tonight and work in a marvelous way. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Because my father wasn't able to send me to school and get an education and many things, maybe God just gave me this gift that I might help his people in another way. But now I want to ask you something sincere. Now, I have taught you at length tonight about Jesus, what he is, who he is, what he does, what he will do. Now, if you will come to this platform and show every sign that I spoke of tonight, right here at this platform, that he did with you, everyone, you newcomers and all. Now, your first time is here. Would you, with all of your heart, believe that he still lives and reigns? Will you do it? Raise your hands now. Thank you. Now, I trust that he will. Now, remember, friends, there's I'm all... I'm saying, and making a statement is all by grace. This, that really, the way to God ought, how many is been with me at different places, and away from church, at my home, and other places, where they have seen the Spirit of God come upon me, and tell things that's exactly what is going to happen, and see it take place that way. Raise your hands anywhere in the meeting. That's, look at them, not in church, that's, out away from different places saying oh this is just a minor here i'll be walking down the street he will tell me now go to the next corner there has to be a lady coming this way she'll be in a wheelchair she's got a bible in her hand and i'll tell you what you watch when you there is a lord is going to heal that person and right there it will happen now they're going to ask you to come over here on this street don't you go, because I want you to go down here. There'll be a sick baby. They'll call for you day after tomorrow. You'll pray for it by phone. Don't leave the baby. You tell the mother the way it's dressed and the way it's laying here on the bed. I say just exactly. And you tell her that it will be healed. I'll stay right here and wait for her. See? Now, how many knows of those things and knows that that's true. Been with me in other places. Raise your hands again like that and see it. See? It. No, see what I mean? See? See, it just never fails. It can't fail. God cannot fail. And now, friends, could you stop a minute? And could you just reach up and get all the doubts and all the things that's in your mind, spiritually speaking now, and we'll put them under your feet? And hold them there a few minutes and to think that if these things be the if this be the true Bible, which it is, and Jesus be resurrected, the Son of God, and everyone that hung at Calvary, the very one, the God of eternity, that's standing right here now, right in this building and right by you. Think of that, friends. Aren't you happy for that? How marvelous. Now, you don't have to be up here now to be prayed for. I asked you out there just to pray yourself. See, God, I'm in need, and I want you to heal me. And if Jesus is the same now, you say, well, what about Jesus? Now, how many knows that his body is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God? Let's see that he's sitting there. That body is in there making an atonement. His life's blood is on that sun, on that mercy seat, and someday he will raise from there and come to the earth in a couple of bodies. Is that right? But now <coughs> he's here in the Holy Ghost, in the form of the Holy Ghost. How many believes that the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ instead of Jesus Christ, the I personal pronoun that will be with you in you to the end of the world? And he's here in the spirit form sin. And he sets in the church himself, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, gives gifts in the church. His love is in him. Now, if that's what he does, and the only thing you can do is, the only thing I can do is yield myself, just yield, just get myself out of the way and just let him say it. Is Billy, is by the word, if you will, come here, lady. Now, this lady who is standing before me, I suppose a stranger to each other, a wee lady we have never met in our lives. I want you just to watch now so you can draw. Ask the lady. 
as a eternity bound person and I've got to stand with this woman because we both live in the same generation. I've got to stand there at the day of the judgment and you've got to stand with me. You all will be a witness. You better receive it tonight. Now, we know not one another. I have no way of knowing you. We are two different people. And we are, I'm a white man, you're a colored lady. And it's a very beautiful picture again of the same thing that happened. Somehow or another tonight, I was going to call from number one, but something has kept telling me, say 45, say 45. And I started to say one and something said 45. And I said 45. And a colored woman raised up for first. There you are now. What is it? It's a picture. The Holy Spirit right here now, see? It's a picture to show you people that Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever here, he was a Jew. The woman at the well was a Samaritan, a different race. And there was a racial segregation. And here's the same thing tonight. White man, colored woman. And then the Jew said to the woman, said, bring me a drink. She said on the segregation laws, in other words, was asked, how do you Jews have any dealings with us? It's not custom for you to ask such a thing as that, see? Oh, it was awful, but Jesus let her know right quick. There's no different with all creatures of God, regardless of our colors, but here it is. And Jesus talked to her a few minutes until he carried the conversation, till he found her trouble was. Then he told her, and what did she say? Why? We know the Messiah will do this when he comes. But who are you? Are you a prophet? He said, I'm the Messiah. Now, if that was his sign, then it, it has to be a sign tonight. You believe that? <coughs> Lady, now as an eternity bound person, being a priest at length and a person that got to meet you at the judgment and the audience here there's nothing undercover that's right god doesn't do things undercover he does things out in the public and by the grace of god i don't say he will do it i may have to say well lady i'll pray for whatever is wrong with you and let you go on i may have to do that if he doesn't anoint me but if he would anoint me with his spirit then if his spirit that lived in the body of Jesus would happen to come upon this body by grace, not worthy, but his blood sanctifies and makes worthy, then if he would anoint me for the purpose of the salvation of these people and reveal to you just what's wrong with you, just like he did what was wrong with the woman, would you believe all of your heart that he's raised from the dead and he's the same, he said, done forever? Would the audience believe the same thing? Well, she says, Amen. All right. The Lord grant it is my prayer. Now, if I could help you, lady, and wouldn't do it, I'd be a terrible person. But I can't help you no more than I can yield myself to the Spirit of God. But seeing now, as the Holy Spirit gives the anointing and your conscience that something's going on, that's the Holy Spirit. You are a Christian. You are a believer. Yes. You, just your life, couldn't be hid now. See, that you feel at this time, actually feel it working in you and standing between me and you is a light. It's the angel of the Lord, the same spirit that, see, met Paul on the road down to Damascus, a light. They got the picture of it. Did you ever see the picture of it? You see it in my books and where it had it in Washington, D.C., that's just exactly what's moving on you right now. You're a nervous woman. That is right. You're bothered with a nervous trouble. You've got a lot of sorrow. You've got something on your heart that's real bad and it's concerning someone, a son. That's right, isn't it? That son is a mental condition. Isn't that right? Does Jesus still live today? Amen. Certainly, that's him standing here now that knows you. Not your brother. It's him. Will you believe him now? Will you believe him, audience? Our Heavenly Father, feeling the dove come sailing down from heaven, standing here to anoint and to help weep one of the creatures. And here stands this our sister in Christ tonight, being the first one to walk up here to display her faith in thee. She is someone who is suffering. 
just now, Lord, thou knowest all about it, and she herself is suffering, and the humility of my heart, and with all of my strength and soul, I pray that you will give to her the desire of her heart, and in confirmation of the word, which you said, these signs shall follow them that believe, if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover, and this I do in just name, amen. Now, report to us, sister, you, their condition, find it, even as you have believed, and may the Lord grant it. You love him. Now, just a few moments to get a few um, of these people up here. How do you do, lady? Now, let's everybody be real quiet, be real reverent, and we don't know just what he will do. Someone in the audience touched him just then. That's right. There's a woman. She had a thing around her arm, one of these things that the doctor squeezes and blows up. Just a moment. She's here, just the same as the woman who touched his garment. That was on the end of the row, high blood pressure. That's right, isn't it, lady? If that's right, stand on your feet. The colored lady here with a little tie on, uh -huh. is he still just today? The lady with no card, no nothing, just sitting here, and she touched him. Now, sister, the Lord bless you and give to you the desire of your heart. And as Jesus said to the woman, go in peace. May God reign with you. Amen. It's just simple believing, having faith. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Now, sister, you, you're a white woman, and I'm a white man. You know, we come, God's no respect of patterns. Did you see what he did to the current lady just a few moments ago? Now, he can do the same for you. And now I can't do nothing for you because I'm just a man. But I can yield myself to the Holy Spirit and by a gift that he that was chosen before the world ever begin. You believe that? Yes, gifts and callings are without repentance. God told the prophet Jeremiah before he was even formed in your mother's womb, I ordained your prophet over the nations. Now your conscience that something's going on right now. Isn't that right? Just since I looked to you and you looked to me, there's been a strange feeling, like a real sweet, lovely feeling. If that's right, raise your hands to the people, see? Because between she and I there stands that light of God standing by. Now I see a darkness of a shadow of black behind her. The woman is extremely nervous because she's shadowed by death. That's a tumor that's malignant. That's right. Between you and I stands life and light. You can't doubt that. But what something's here that knows you, is that right? Now, walk up into light and accept the light. The Lord Jesus and accept healing and the tumor of cancer. Life will go from it and you live. Can you believe? Do you believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, lives and is here to help you now? Will you come forward just a moment so that I may lay my hands on you? God, you as and God, Father God, who loves creatures of this earth, I ask now that in Jesus' name that you will condemn the shadow of death over the woman, and may the light of God break forth, and may she live, and we charge this unclean spirit, death spirit, to leave her in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, it was written by your own disciples that you said, In my name they shall cast out devils, and this I do in Jesus' name. Amen. Go and God's peace be with you. Would you come ready? Have faith in God now. Believe just a moment. Don't doubt. Are you believing in the audience? Everybody. Believe it. Jesus said, If thou canst believe, now I see standing before me a white woman. She's touching the master and she's in this audience. And she sat right down here with a red sweater on, suffering with a trouble in her chest, frightened. You when it left you, the need sister, the lady sitting with a kind of a short bobbed hair. Will you stand up a minute with the red sweater on? Isn't she wonderful to be free of that spirit? You touched him now, go in peace and God be with you, amen. I seen someone with a red sweater and seen this lady with a red dress, the red coat. I looked and it was, I seen that the way the woman had a red sweater and I looked. And here she was down here. I seen it was her trouble. Now, I'm a stranger to you, lady. I don't know you as far as I'm capable of knowing. Now, 
they shouldn't switch other. But God knows us both. Is that right? You went to me, see me in Canada. You just saw many miracles in Canada that God performed as a prayed for the sick. Of course, I wouldn't know you. You know what I mean. To know you personally, I wouldn't have no way of knowing you that way. You was in a meeting maybe where was that this last meeting in Saskatchewan? Oh, in 1946. That's when I first started. That's perhaps that was up in Winnipeg, somewhere like that. I believe I was in Winnipeg. The lady about a vision. Well, it was in, in 38. I begin to see glorious visions here. Yeah? And the Lord stretched forth his hand and said, Go and strengthen this man with a in your meeting. And I saw a huge, beautiful star which called himself the star of Bethlehem, and he seemed to throw its radiance out over all the sick in your meeting. You heard that it's a lady, a vision she had when she came to my meeting in Canada in 46. Now, you're here for some purpose, lady. Now the Lord knows, now the Lord has not lost his strength since he appeared in that meeting as a morning star and showed his radiance over the audience. There was a Mexican man sitting here last night. He saw the dove of God come down in that light over this audience. Now, the Lord bless you. And you being a lady, just standing there, I just want to see if the Lord will reveal to me what you're here for. And then, if the Lord will, then I'll pray. And then the Lord probably will give you your desires. I trust that he will. I pray that the sister speaks about her. Huh? She said she's from Pine Bluff, somewhere here. She come here with her. And before she got here, she seen it in a vision. Walked before her, and the Holy Spirit said, This is Brother Branham. Yes, she heard that I had an appointment here. She had a desire to come, and I had the appointment. All right. Now, there's something the Lord wants you here for. Then, the Lord Jesus is wonderful. Now, He's good and He's full of mercy. You're here tonight to see me. It's because I see you've been in an, someone, another meeting to someone else. I see a man coming to you, and he was trying, telling you, an evangelist, that there was something wrong with your heart. Said it was about three times its normal size. That's right. I didn't want to call it his name before the public. It's Mr. Hayes is who it was. And he told you you had a tumor, malignant tumor, a cancer in your stomach. And you, the Lord, has sent you here. I don't mean condemn Brother Hayes, but that's wrong. And that's why the Lord has sent you here, that you know the truth. This speaks again. Sure, come here. That's why the Lord sent you and give you the vision, saying he wants you to know the truth. And that's why I passed by you in your vision, or whatever it was the other night, that God sent you here to know truth. I hate to condemn the man's words, but it's wrong. It's not so. No, ma'am, it isn't so. Go, and the Lord Jesus bless you, Heavenly Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, straighten this woman's. She's almost calm, become a nervous break on account of this. And I pray God that you'll make her understand. And now, know now that it's your grace that's been imparted to her, that she come here tonight and these things would be told. I pray that she'll return to her home happy, rejoicing, and not bothered anymore. And give glory to thee throughout the country and around about in Jesus' name. The sister speaks by Abraham again. Now, you just go on now rejoicing. See how wrong he was. Now, you go on rejoicing and be happy. Now, how could you doubt God being in our midst now? Sing. How wonderful. Would you come with him? Now just a few moments more and let's this young lady standing here with the Lord answer prayer. Now, young lady, as far as I know, I don't know you. I must tell this lady this. It can't let it get by. Lady, was up here? Quit. See, don't fool with that. 
That's for spiritualism. Stay away from that sin. I rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, that's the evil thing that's telling you that lie. You stay away from that. All right. The Holy Spirit here just wouldn't. I didn't want to see something right out. There's many things could be said. But just in that way. Now, young lady, do you believe with all your heart? All right. Are we strangers to each other? Perfect strangers. A lady sitting right back there is bothered with breathing. Aren't you lady? Sitting there with a little black tie on. I see you trying to stand before me, trying in your chest. Your trouble is, it's left you, sister. Dear, amen. There's a lady sitting there, nowhere at all of knowing, just sitting there praying. And the Holy Spirit spoke, and here she stood here in front of me. I looked around and seen where it was coming from. It was right there. It, isn't it the Lord wonderful? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. I see a young lady before me. Oh, how wonderful. My, just a moment. She's sitting right on the end of the row. She suffers with headaches. You believe the Lord Jesus will make you well. You accept it. You can wipe the tear from your eye. You believe with your heart. Raise up your hand to Christ and accept it. All right. God bless you. Your faith touches, touches him. Now look at that man sitting they are praying, kind of black hair, thing in front. He's got a great burden. I see a dark shadow hanging over him, wearing a brown suit and a red tie. I believe he's praying for someone. Is that right, sir? That is right. It's a woman. Isn't it cancer? Have faith. Believe your mother-in-law and will get well and you'll be, she'll be all right if you'll just believe. Amen. You believe? It's your chest. That's right, isn't it? And it's some kind of a crush mashing your chest. And it's a bone, they say, laying close to the heart that causes you to smother. You can't sleep either, can you? I see you getting up and walking around. Isn't that right? Just been a terrible thing. But the Lord is here to make you well. You believe he knows you? Do you believe Jesus is raised from the dead? Well, Irene, you believe? You, your last name is Young, isn't it? Your number is 7706 Howard Street from Detroit, Michigan. Now, do you believe it? Go in peace and God bless you. My sister, Lord Jesus, heal this, my sister, and make her well in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Go, take that handkerchief and send it to the, your daughter in Little Rock, Arkansas, for that mental condition. And may she get well. Do you believe he's here? Let's turn and praise him and get healed. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Christ, we condemn every evil spirit and heal the sick just now. Lord, I pray that you'll get great glory and Satan come to these people and leave this building in Jesus Christ's name. Give God praise and be healed, every one of you, in Jesus Christ's name.